All right, today I have a combi oven that has a dead short. So let's go ahead and fire up the unit. And we got no display. All right, so let's start off here by pulling out our schematic. And let's go with the super obvious here. Let's just check incoming power here. We got three phases. That's the obvious place to start. So let's go test that and see what happens. All right, so let's start with L1 to L2, 207, we're good there. L2 to L3, 27, and the last combination, L1 to L3, 207. All right, so now let's just break down how does this display board actually get power. Okay, so let's go find the display board here. Uh, A1 is your control. Another A1, different variation, and right here, a gold display. So this is the load here in question. And we get our power here, 24 volts DC. And let's see where we're getting our power from. So this is coming off of X9.1 and looks like X9.2. Okay, so let's just keep going further back, okay? And then X9.2 is coming through a K16 contact an F2 fuse, 3.15 amp, and that's how we're getting our 24 volts DC. Um, let's see what all these things have in common. So let's just keep working backwards. So this control board is the same one as here. And if we look really carefully here, we'll find that we're getting our power in on, looks like X, 10.1 and x 10.5 so let's just draw these guys out so this one's coming here and it's showing f42 2.3 and then this one is just coming off of our main so this is kind of our common leg which is f4 1.2 so this marking here is actually telling you where to go in the schematic so 2.3 it's telling you go to page two and then section three. Okay, so a lot of people don't know that about a schematic, how to read a schematic. And a lot of the European ones will use this. And it's pretty cool that they've done this because there's certain schematics you can't fit everything on one page. This is like a five page schematic. Okay, this makes our life easy. So we're going to go page 2.3 and we're going to look for F4.2. So let's go do that. So if we look at the page, there's page three. And if we come here, page two of six uh, it's written in German there so uh, you kind of get used to translating things when you work on these combis so if we come here and it's saying F42 which I'm seeing is right here F4 terminal 2 and then if we follow it up A1 X10.1 which is exactly what our terminal is. So board A1, X10, terminal one. So look at that, look how easily we're breaking this down. So let's come all the way back here and let's trace her back. So this is feeding from here. It's coming through this fuse. We're coming here. We're connected before the contactor. So look at that, straight shot. Straight shot to the board right there coming through this fuse okay and then if we go back and trace our second leg it's telling us f4 1.2 which is 2.8 so let's go to page two again and then if we scroll up here we go to section eight right here and look at that f4 one one two and then let's just follow this guy back here should probably zoom out a little bit and look at that just like magic here's our fuse f41.2 right remember we saw that earlier what's f1 so f4.1 is your fuse and wire 2 and just like that in probably less than five minutes we've just drawn out our entire schematic and this is also bypassing the contactor and it's a straight shot on l2 all right.
So now we can see our direct path. We're coming up through two fuses, and it's telling us to go to page 4.3. So let's go to page 4, which we've already drawn this out. We're on page 4. If we go to dot 3, telling us it's in this section. And look at that, like magic, right here. Okay, so at this point in time, we can either start troubleshooting from over here, or I'm going to troubleshoot from the front of the schematic. So my first test point that I'm going to use are these two fuses. And let's just literally follow the flow and see where we lose power here. All right, so let's start by checking power into our F4 fuses, 207 in. Zero volts out. So one or both fuses are blown. Let's test the cross here. Let's see if both are blown or just one. So we're testing for potential difference. All right, 80 volts. That fuse is blown. And 80 volts. And we'll just do our visual checks here. And if you look really closely here, that F5 fuse is blown all right so we found our f4.1 80 volts across f4.2 80 volts potential difference these guys are blown so let's start drawing our picture here so we come up from our l1 coming across here and we're coming to here and this switch is open or fuse is open and then let's draw here L2 so both fuses are blown so let's keep them in the open position and then we found an F5 was blown all right so A1 control board and let's find our F5 right here so this guy's blown as well so let's go get the fuses changed and then uh, let's troubleshoot further from there all right, so let's get our F4.1, F4.2, 6 amp fuses replaced. Obviously power down to do this. It is three phase 208, and as we saw in the schematic, um, these are bypassing the contactor. Let's get these F4 changed out. Pop that in there, there we go. And then that F5 I've already replaced. So let's fire up and see what happens. All right, so we do have a display again, which is great news. And contactor is pulling in. That's also good news. But our fuse is blown again, this F5. So we have a dead short on this F5. Okay. So let's get her changed out. And let's do some troubleshooting and figure out why this guy is blowing. There we go. Pop her in there. All right. So we've identified that our F5 is dead shorting okay so whenever you have a dead short there's two ways to go you can disconnect all the loads and go one by one we have tons of loads here it's insane we got our pumps um, cooling fans all kinds of loads it would be it would take forever bunch of elements all kinds of elements some motors transformer that's feeding some lights so yeah we got tons of loads here we're not going to disconnect one by one and isolate that way okay what we're going to do is we're going to focus in on this f5 okay so let's just draw the f5 schematic so we're coming through a k8 contact which is our k8 relay on the board that's soldered on the board you cannot replace it so it's number eight and let's follow it back, X17.1, 
and then we're coming to M8, which is our lift magnet, and then let's draw the other side. And we're coming through our lift magnet. So look at that. You know, 30 seconds on the schematic, and instead of isolating every single load, you know, you just pull up here, draw your lines, and look at that. Problem's probably the lift magnet. So let's go isolate the lift magnet, and let's see what happens. All right, so let's go run this lift magnet. Okay, relay number eight. And as the board showed us, or as the schematic showed us, it was number eight. So really, really good drawn schematic. So, okay, I just pressed it for a second there. Let's let's try to hold this down a little bit longer. And let's see if we can hear the lift magnet. So let's push it here. And my fuse has blown. So, let's just go here and we're just going to confirm there's no power being sent. Obviously, the fuse is blown, so it's not going to send any power. Zero volts. So, the next thing we're going to do is um, we're going to pull off the wires. And let's just do a quick ohm test. Okay, we know this is blowing the fuse, but let's just ohm it out. Um, and see how high it's ohming out at because we could have an issue with who knows what wires rubbing out somewhere or touching touching somewhere dead shorting two wires touching who knows but most likely it's going to be the load let's just do our due diligence here and let's just be a hundred percent certain so be patient here i'm going to pull off this connector we're going to ohm her out and then we're going to use our ohms law to figure out if the amperage is too high. Alright, so finally getting to the connector here. Alright, finally got the connector out here, finally. And let's get our leads on there. We're testing resistance, so we obviously want to open the circuit. Don't test it directly on the board. You will backfeed. And we're getting like 0 0.2, 0 0.3 ohms. Alright, so we're getting 0 0.3 ohms. So let's do our ohms law here. So voltage divided by resistance will give us amperage. Okay, so we want to see if we have too much amperage blowing that fuse. So we have 207 volts. Divide that by our... 0.3 ohms and that's going to equal our amperage so let's go do that really quickly so 207 divided by 0 0.3 690 amps so that's how much we're drawing off of this lift magnet uh, amperage is clearly way too high blowing the fuse so let's go ahead and get this lift magnet swapped out all right, so here's the new lift magnet. I always like to ohm it out. And you can see we're getting like 9 mega ohm. So this thing's going to draw like little to no amperage. So you can see from 9 mega ohm to 0 0.3 ohms. Big difference. So let's get this bad boy swapped out. Uh, let's just hit the fast forward here. All right, so here you can see the uh, old lift magnet full of grease soot whatever you want to call it but yeah basically gummed up really badly okay so that's definitely the cause of why this thing is drawing so many amps um that magnet just can't move in there all right well, just got it back in here all right so first thing we're going to go do is run that r8 relay and we're not going to get any amp draw because like i said we have nine mega ohm on that so the meter's not even going to pick it up, but listen for the magnet lifting and closing. Lifting and closing, we're all good. So the last thing I want to do is I'm going to go run all my loads. Okay, let's just make sure nothing's back feeding. So make sure you're doing this on these combi ovens. Anytime you get a blown fuse on any of these combis. So first one is going to be that uh, quenching. You can see the water pressure's coming down. She's working good. And let's go to our siphon pump. 
make sure it's running. Water's going down the drain. We're all good there. And let's just keep going down the line here, one at a time. So 16's already running. And let's go to 11, which is those cooling fans we saw on the schematic. You know, they could be shorting out. And as we can see, cooling fans are running. We're all good there. And then the last load I want to hit up is our wave cooling pump. And it is running. No blown fuse. All good. Last thing we're going to do is run the oven. And we want to make sure there's no steam leaks out of this little, uh, that little fitting. Okay, no steam leaks. We're all good here. All right, so as you can see there, we had the dreaded dead short, which is one of the more um, difficult things to troubleshoot for sure that I'm finding uh, when techs are calling me and um, that people struggle on. Now, the the most common route that everyone goes is just you isolate the load. So just say you have 10 loads, you disconnect them, you connect them one at a time. Now, the issue with that is uh, it may not dead short until that load calls for uh, or that load gets power. Okay, so that can become very time consuming. So in this case, we just broke down the schematic. We found that fuse. Um, thankfully, it was only controlling one load. So that made the troubleshooting super easy. So once again, I can't stress the importance of just learning schematics, schematic work. It just makes your life so much easier. I know the easy thing to do is, is to jump on the machine and try to follow the wire or call tech support. Um, but really, once you learn the schematics, this stuff just becomes easier and easier every time you work on it.